told that in these postmodern days, whatever that may mean, there's a greater need and desire for people to become part of large groups. People tend to live on their own, but they need some kind of group around them. Some people deal with that need for relationships by joining a health club. They pay some money over, sign a contract, and they become a member of a health club and get fit, enjoy themselves. Others may choose to support their local football club. They'll buy a season ticket that lasts them a year, spend a lot of money, and they'll, they'll sit in the terraces shouting their favourite team on. Other people who may want to spend less money or have different interests in life may turn around and say, I want to join a, uh, a political party. And so with a greater or lesser degree of enthusiasm, they become part of a group who are working for the good of others. Still other people decide, hmm, the church is for them. They want to become a member of a church and joining a church is actually rather different to becoming a member of a political party or a health club or going on to support the football club. There's no legal document to sign or things like that. But nevertheless, there is a commitment of sorts and it expresses people's needs to belong to something special, a group. It deals with the kind of society that people find them in, where they are alone, where they need some, some people to be with. Joining a health club may have no ceremonial, though the football club may have its own rituals involving the wearing of scarves and shirts. The situation with the church is no different, though can vary from denomination to denomination. With some denominations, there's an acceptance into the membership by mutual consent. In others, there may be some form of washing a baptism or a confirmation service following a christening that may have taken place in the early months of life. Perhaps the busyness of life drives us to seek solitude. Our towns and cities are full of noise, our jobs are stressful. Thankfully, our environs are not the same as those of the 19th century, with its smog and smoke, with the poverty of the back-to-back -back houses in Lancashire towns where cotton was king. And Lancashire is where we go to. Some time back I was seeking peace. I needed to walk out in the hills during a very busy day. I knew of a reservoir deep in the hills and of a path round the edges. I read the notes on the signboard at the entrance to the walk and noticed there was an ancient baptistry halfway round. This I had to see. Such a surprise. There I was in the middle of the hills, miles almost from nowhere. The baptistry is constructed of dry stone walling behind which there is a lining of puddled clay to retain the water. It's filled with water from the stream running down. The Reverend James Maiden was the pastor of Gambleside Chapel in the 1850s. He writes this, It was an event of the season when the baptismal Sabbath came round, spring or summer. We sat round on the sloping sides to view the dipping as it was turned of the candidates for church membership. Singing of birds, lowing of cattle, bleating of sheep, God's sun shining down. It was glorious. On those occasions, we didn't keep Sunday school. So try to, ex so try to imagine the setting. Here we are, the people from Clowbridge have come out here, maybe walked two miles. They're dressed in what would be their Sunday best. They're here to see their neighbours, their friends, their relatives, maybe their sons or daughters become a member of the church. The pool would be nicely prepared, full of cold stream water. Now six to eight foot wide, 25 to 30 foot long, and four foot deep. It is a remarkable sight in a beautiful area. Appropriate hymns would be sung, a sermon would be preached, kind words would be said, and the candidate would be introduced into the water. They'd be totally immersed, brought out of the water, and then changed, or at least, dried off in the beautiful summer sun. What a wonderful way to symbolise becoming a member of the church family. There may be times when as Christians we may, we may be alone or even lonely, but as part of the Christian family we won't actually be alone. In the Bible, the entry into the Christian family is quite specifically seen and described as a baptism. It requires an immersion in water, that's the way the Greek is written. So John baptised Jesus into a river not sprinkled him with a few drops of water. Similarly, there's a story in a book of the Bible called the Acts of the Apostles. A man, an Ethiopian, is travelling in the area. 
he's reading his Bible, he doesn't understand what he's reading. Philip, one of the leading lights of the day, comes up and explains to the man exactly what he's reading. It happens to be a part of the book of Isaiah. We can't tell why the foreigner asks for baptism, but he does. Philip obliges, good man that he is. Philip, a Judean, recognises the longing in the man for belonging, to being part of God's family. They're passing a convenient stretch of water. They wade out into the water and the man is baptised, totally immersed. He's taken under the water. He goes down as just another Ethiopian passing through the, ter the area. But he comes up and he's now part of the Christian family. He goes on his way, goes back to Ethiopia. Philip rejoins his family in nearby Samaria. Though they're separated by distance, they're now joined together as a family. We live in a world, as we've seen, where people are looking for relationships. What better relationship than a relationship with God expressed through baptism? A cleansing of the old way of life and entry into a new way of life. The story continues. The traveller, he, he is an Ethiopian, goes on his way while Philip returns to his family. The pair are separated by distance, but not now by relationship. They're part of the same family. They are joined together. Our generation is looking for relationships, but what better way and what better form of relationship than a relationship with Jesus expressed symbolically through baptism? In the Seventh-day Adventist church where I pastor, I often encourage the singing of a particular song after a baptism to express the idea of a family brought together. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing the song for you, but I will read the words. Family. We're family. Jesus is our God. And I'm so glad that he brought us together. And I'm so glad that the Father is our Lord. I like that picture of God. He's expressing himself as Father, saying, I'm part of the family and you are part of my family. It's about bringing people together. There are times when we want to be alone and quiet. But there are many times when we need to be part of a family that we can feel trusted and warm with and close to. The church, the church's family, is just one of those warm, safe places we can be part of. Wash me clean in that cool river. Wash my soul in that pure water. Wash me clean in that cool river, Lord, make me new. Wash me clean in that cool river, wash my soul in that pure